All right, guys, this is Unit 11. This is our last unit of the school year. And in Unit 11, we're going to be talking all about circles. And so in Section 11.1, we're just going to focus on the vocab, um, which is associated with circles, since uh, most of it we would have not seen before. Um, and this is going to be very important vocab moving into each of the later sections of Unit 11. Okay. So starting off with the definition of a circle. So a circle is a set of points that are the same distance from any given point. So again, you can start with a point that would be in the center and then all the points that are equidistant from that are um, the points for your circle. Next is the center of a circle. So the center of the circle is that point um, that's in the center of the circle. Um, and all the points around it are equidistant from that center point. And then finally here in this first part of the vocab, we have the name of the circle. So what we do when, when we want to name the circle is we draw the symbol with a circle with a point in the middle and the letter of the center is written next to it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the parts of a circle. So first of all, the definition of the radius of a circle. So what exactly is a um, radius? So a radius is the segment that joins the center with any other point on the circle. So when you draw a segment from the um, center point out to um, one of the other points on the circle, that is what a radius is. Next is the definition of congruent circles. So congruent circles are two circles that have congruent radii, meaning that they have two radii with the same length. And when we say radii, that is the plural of radius. Um, so you do not say radiuses, we call them radii. Uh, so again, when you have two circles that have congruent radii, those two are going to be congruent circles. Next is the definition of a chord. So a chord is any segment that joins two points on the circle. So when you pick two points on the circle and you join those two points together, that is going to be the definition of a chord. So again, just to kind of reiterate, when you're talking about the radius of a circle, um, you can either call that, in this case, PX or XP. Either one would work. And then for our congruent circles, if we have X as a point on the outside of this circle and Y on the outside of this circle, then if we have that PX is congruent to QY, then we can say that these two circles are congruent to each other. In other words, if you would say that circle P, and remember when you want to name a circle, you draw the circle with a point in the middle and then list the center of it after that circle P is congruent to circle Q. Okay, so then again for a chord, um, we'll just call that AB and we'll call that line segment AB. Um, so again, any two points on the circle can create a chord. So then a diameter is just a special type of chord. Um, it is a chord that goes through the center of the circle. Um, so in this case, that would be line segment CD, or you could write it the opposite way, line segment DC. I'm both talking about the same thing. Next, let's talk about the definition of a secant. So a secant is essentially a chord which extends past the circle. So it is a line that intersects the circle at two points. In other words, to say the secant line EF, we would say EF, and then remember to say that it's a line, you draw in a symbol above it that has, let me draw it a little bit better here for us, uh, but basically has two arrows pointing out of it. So you've got your um, symbol and then two arrows pointing out on either side. And so that notice is different from how you listed out a chord earlier. So chords, you use the line segment symbol um, where there are no arrows, or arrows, 
Whereas a secant, you do use those arrows to indicate that it is a line rather than a line segment. And then finally here, the definition of a tangent is a line that intersects a circle at only one point. So it just kind of barely touches the circle and only does that at a single point. So again, since it's a line, um, we'll use any two letters on that line and then make sure that you've got the arrows above those two letters uh, to indicate that it is in fact the line. Our final definition here before we look at an example and kind of do some practice with naming each of these things is the definition of a point of tangency. The point of tangency is the point where a tangent intersects the circle. So looking at this circle and we've got this line HG which intersects with the circle at this point G, then that would mean that point G is a point of tangency for this particular diagram. Okay, so let's look at an example where we can kind of see each of these in practice. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this example here. Obviously lots of stuff on this diagram because we're gonna try to name each of the following on this particular uh, diagram. So yeah, um, first of all, the center. So if you look at your circle, which on mine is in green here, um, whereas each of the lines is blue and each of the points is um, kind of that reddish color. Um, so the center of that would be the point in the very middle of our circle. That would be the point E. And when you're listing out a point, you can just list off that point. Um, so you do not have to put anything else. Just write the letter down. Now to name the circle, all you do is you add the symbol for the circle in front. So you put your circle symbol and then you list off that center of your circle, which was again point E. So for number two, that would be just this right here. Next, for your radius, that would be any of the line segments which connect your center, which is at E, to a point on the circle. And notice that we've got a few different points around our circle that we could pick from. Um, so that could be the, the length EA or EB or ED or I suppose even EC. So if you wanted to list all of them off, um, there were four radii that were given to you. Any one of those would be an acceptable uh, answer for number three. So for number four, a chord. Remember, chords are any two points on the circle which are connected to each other. Um, so you would have that A is connected to B, B is connected to C, and that C is connected to D. Any one of those would be an acceptable chord, um, whether that, again, was AB or BC or CD. So any of those would be acceptable for a chord. So then a diameter is a line segment which goes through the center of your circle. So notice that AEC, this line segment that goes from A to C, would be considered a diameter. It goes from one point on the circle to another, and it also goes through the center. And actually, that is the only diameter which is on this diagram. Notice that DEB is not a single line segment. Notice that it's crooked. It's not as if it goes directly from D to B and goes through our center E. So again, to be a diameter has to go from one point on the circle to another and has to go through the center. All right, so number six, a secant. Remember, a secant is any line that goes through two points on your circle. So looking at it, we've got basically two lines to pick from. We've got this line AF and this line DC. AF only goes and crosses at one point, whereas DC crosses obviously at those two points. So that would be our secant. So that would be DC. And then remember, since it's a line, we need to make sure and include that symbol for a line above DC. So that should make number seven pretty easy for tangent. We've already talked about one of those lines that only crosses at a single point. That was line FA or line AF, depending on um, which way you would want to write it. And then that goes pretty closely with our next question, which was our point of tangency. 
So remember, point of tangency is where your tangent line intersects your circle. That's at point A. And at that point, we are done with this example. So let's talk about tangent circles. We, we should understand now what a tangent line is, but what does it mean for two circles to be tangent to each other? Well, we say two circles are tangent if they intersect at only a single point. Um, so there are two different types of tangent circles. There are what are called external and what are called internal. So with external tangent circles, that's going to be circles where um, you basically end up with them intersecting at just a um, single point and they are outside of one another. Um, so you've got maybe one circle like this and then another circle. Let's see if I can draw this here for us, which intersects at just a point outside of that. And again, it can only intersect at one point. So something that looks kind of like this. So again, they're intersecting at just a single point, but they are outside of one another. Those would be an example of external tangent circles. So again, external, outside. So internal, you can probably guess what that's going to mean. Internal means that it's going to be inside. In other words, you're going to have one circle and then another circle inside of it. And that inside circle only intersects with the outside circle at a single point. So again, something that looks maybe something kind of like this, where again, you're intersecting at just a single point. So again, external, you are intersecting at a point and the two circles are apart from each other. Internal, one is inside the other and they're intersecting at just a single point. Okay, so a little bit more about tangent lines. Let's go ahead and talk about this and this should be it for today. And um, so a common tangent is a line that is a tangent for two different circles. In other words, the line touches not one, but two circles, each at just a single point. And again, we're going to have external common tangents and internal common tangents. So when a tangent line does not intersect the segment which connects the two centers of the circles, we call it an external tangent. So looking at these two circles, we've got P and Q as the centers. In order to help us uh, kind of illustrate this, we've got our line segment PQ, which joins those. So an external tangent is one where it basically will intersect each of these circles just at a single point, And it does not cross through that center line. So let me move that up a little bit, kind of like this. So again, just intersecting at these two points, but does not cross this inner line which connects the two centers of your circles. In fact, there would be kind of two different common tangents for these two circles, one of which we've already drawn, the other of which would be kind of like this, and again, would not intersect that center segment between the two circles. So that's external. Internal is that it will intersect that segment connecting the two centers of the circles. So when you want to draw an internal tangent, basically what that's going to look like is something more like this. Uh, let me go ahead and move this a little bit here. So something that looks kind of like this. So again, it's a tangent because it does just cross at one of each of those points. But it does, in fact, cross that center line that we were talking about. So that is what makes it internal. And just like before, there's another one. I'm, I'm not going to draw it necessarily, but it would essentially go in the opposite direction. Um, so it would go kind of like this direction. Um, again, not going to draw that one, but you get the idea. All right, guys. So that is it for section 11.1. Lots of definitions, lots of vocab. I would encourage you to even possibly make some flashcards to kind of review um, because we're going to definitely be using all this vocab throughout the rest of this unit. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's going to make the rest of this unit very hard. That being said, guys, until next time, have a great rest of your day.